Hey guys, Anthony 4 Before Diesel. We're just going to do a quick video answering 10 of the most popular questions all in one video. So I've got one minute per question. We're going to start off with the most boring, least asked questions first, but they are the top 10 in the last month. First one is, when should I or should I sell my Prado? When do you sell your Prado? Well, you don't sell your Prado until there's a better one, until you're replacing it with a better one. You don't sell your Prado to buy other makes and models. That is a mistake. I haven't got time to tell you why. Keep your Prado, look after your Prado, maintain your Prado. When there's a better Prado, you know what the best Prados are. I love the last of the 120s. I love the last of the 150s with a 1KD with a five speed auto. If you got one of those, you don't sell it. Another quick little tip, don't call me for diagnostic help. Okay, watch the diagnostic videos on our YouTube channel under the playlist called Diagnostic Information. Watch all those videos so you can learn what the parameters are. That's our minute up. Next one is, okay, the next one might save you some money. Uh, what what do I pay? How much do you pay for a Prado? What do you pay? What, what's the right price to pay? Well, if you go into a dealership, uh, probably don't, but if you do, and you see that uh, price tag hanging on the back window there, take off about six or seven grand, because usually the trade-in value to the price they put on that is quite often 10 grand, right? Yes, 10 grand markup. They pay bottom price for the vehicle. They've got some work to do. They've got to pay wages, pay rent, lot fee, overheads, and all that sort of thing, and they're there to make some money, okay? So they buy them cheap, you'll get some sort of warranty with it usually, so you gotta pay the price. So what should you pay? Never pay the ticket price is the main thing, okay? You need to compare what's available. Quick little tip, we haven't got long. If you're comparing cars for sale, the cheapest ones are the ones closer to the sale price, the dearest ones are dreaming. So if you compare all the ones you're looking at, take your time, you'll notice that the cheaper ones are the ones that'll sell, the dearer ones, they're just dreaming. Well, this one's gonna be hard to fit in one minute. What battery to buy, okay. What battery to buy? Uh, we've got videos on batteries, check our playlist, battery information, okay. Uh, what battery to buy? Depends if you're using it off-road or not doing trips or you're just going to the shops and back. So you don't have to go and buy the Optimus if you're just using it locally. Again, I like the original GSU Arsa, uh, Panasonic, you get them from every battery. They're those white ones with a black top, really good batteries, okay? So if it's just a normal vehicle, I highly recommend those vehicle, uh, those batteries. If you're doing off-road, remote touring, corrugated roads, we really love the Optimus. They're tested and proven. I'm not gonna go on about it. You can check our playlist, like I said, battery information. Um, I haven't really got much time to go in more detail than that. Uh, and that's all I can say, so we saved a bit of time on that one. Hey, I hope you, this is what you get if you want a quick one. So those people that want the quick videos, quick, 10 in one, this is quick. But if you want the extended information, you need to go watch all the other videos because that's what it's normally gonna be. Okay, do I need a pan hard rod? What's a pan hard rod? That's that one there, right? It connects the diff, follow it across to the body of the vehicle, right? Its job is to hold the rear diff from moving side to side. Okay, no, you don't need one. If you get a suspension lift, you don't need one. It depends what vehicle and how high you're going, but this vehicle's lifted 50 mil in the rear. You can see the bar's still quite level. If you do go a lot higher, what happens is that will, obviously, as that bar goes on an angle, the diff will uh, move from one side to the other. That bar will shorten, it'll pull the diff toward the driver's side, right? Uh, if I just said that right. I don't get to think in one minute, so I could get it wrong. So then you would buy one that's adjustable to change the length, but you don't need one. The diff can be a little bit one side or the other and it's not gonna make a lot of difference. Uh, so my short answer is no, you don't need a panard rod. You just need your springs and your shockers for a lift that's suitable for a Prado. All right, the spare wheel cover. What do you do with a spare wheel cover? Well, this vehicle still got the spare wheel cover on. Uh, again, I've only got one minute each to their own, but basically what happens is if you've got the spare wheel cover on and you do touring remote trips, what Prados were made for, one day when you get a flat tire and you've got to change it, it's a real pain to get it off and on and then you've got to put it somewhere and it won't fit in the car because you're fully loaded. Then you've got to put it back on and then get somewhere to tie on and off, on and off and it takes up space and it might blow away in the wind and people have trouble getting them back on. So if there's a chance you're ever going to use your spare, I say get rid of the cover. If it's a Tourac tractor, you can probably uh, deal with it or something because you're close to home and you've got room to put it in the back. But for most people, as most people do, we get rid of them. Okay, what are oh, you worried about protecting your tyre? You put your spare wheel bag over there, um, you know, the rubbish bin bag, and if you get the right one, we use that one from Super Cheap Ridge Rider, 70 bucks. Not saying they're the best, but you know, that's what we've used for years. Anyway, get rid of the spare wheel cover.
the best wheels are they genuine alloys, not steel or any aftermarket ones, all right? So uh, we've got one minute to explain why, okay? We've owned these vehicles, we've used them, we've been off-road, we've been working on them, we've seen and heard just about everything. So all that data comes together and tells us alloys are better. The only downside to the alloys on the 120s, that solid on the valve stem, you need to get rid of that solid valve stem and put a flexi one on there. I haven't got time to tell you why. It's all in other videos, guys. Watch the other videos. I hope you like this 10 in one. All the people that go, oh, you could make a long video, anything along the air, well, this is gonna be boom. So I hope you get enough information out of it. And if you do, please remember at the end to give us a thumbs up. So alloys, keep the genuine alloys. You can paint them black, whatever you like. They're just true, they're square, they're strong. The alignment system, the way the wheel locates over the hub, the hub nut, the nuts, everything works well the way it is. Genuine wheels are best alloys, they get bent, they're cheap, crap quality, whatever. Anyway, we're out of time. Okay, how to clean up the vehicle properly after beach trips. I've got to tell you, there's going to be a much more detailed video on our 4x4 Touring Australia channel on this one, because it is really important. But I'm going to give you what I can give you in one minute. Um, you don't, depending how much beach, what state you live in, all that sort of thing, and obviously a lot of variables which I need more time to go into, but generally the best thing you can do is as soon as you're finished, well, avoid salt water, okay? So don't drive in salt water. And if you do, straight away, as soon as you get to fresh water, car wash or whatever, wash it out, okay? Don't drive in salt water. Best thing you can do at the end of each day, if possible, use some fresh water to rinse it off. Or if you see any fresh water creeks, gently drive through those to flush any uh, what you can out. As soon as you get home from the trips, the main one, you need to get under it with a hose. You just hold your hose underneath and just give all the underneath back, front, sides. Lots of water is the key to it. Flush out the salt water. Unfortunately, I can't show any more detail. I'm out of time. Subscribe to 4 People Touring Australia as well and you'll know more. Throttle controllers. Should you get one? Which is the best one? Do they do damage? Okay, quickly. You'll see on our sponsor's picture there, we've got the iDrive picture there now. They won't do damage like, you know, having a chip sort of thing. We haven't got a lot of detail to go into it, but no, it won't cause any issues to your engine, to your transmission, maybe. Probably not in a 1KD. I'll just, again, out of time, you need to subscribe to both channels. We're going to have more detail on this. We were running one in the 2019 1GD, which I'm already not happy with the uh, transmission software shift, so it can't be blamed, but it made it worse. Torque converter unlock transmission oil is getting even hotter, so we removed it to continue the R&D on another vehicle. We haven't run one here on this 120 because we, I don't think we need it, but that being said, when I drive customers' cars and I get in and I go, wow, this is a rocket ship, this goes great, I look down to the right near the key and I see the iDrive and it's on AC automatic control. Awesome, okay, and the transmission shifts still seem okay, so it's up to you. Okay, when do you balance your wheels and why? Okay, well, if somebody didn't balance them right the first time, they'll need balancing. If they went on the back, you probably won't notice it, especially with big four dry wheels and tires. They can be quite a few grams out, and you won't even, you won't even, you know, notice what's going on. Uh, so when you rotate your tires front to rear, when you're moving from the rear to the front, that's might when might be when you notice it, and that's why. You should probably balance them whenever you're moving your tires from the rear to the front. Uh, the other reason is driving on the road, if you hit potholes and stuff like that, uh, that could put things, you know, depending what wheels, could bend wheels, damage tires, whatever, and put things out of alignment. And of course, weights can fall off. You hit a pothole depending, you know, okay, if people use stick-ons and they don't clean it properly, they can fall off. Uh, we've had that happen, thanks very much. And uh, of course, those ones that stick on the rim, like the one in the picture just there, these Toyota rims are special profile, they're not usual mag wheel weights, and you can see where that one, you probably can't see, but that's in another video. Okay, so balance your wheels. Lucky that's last, it. something for the Hilux guys. Um, this one's probably not a good example, but it's the only one we've got here at the moment, and that is, this one actually sits really well, front and rear, nice and not even, but you know, not much difference. Quite often they can be low at the front when they've added a bull bar on um, and the rear obviously can be quite high and there's quite a big gap there which is okay because it's built for a load and when you put the load in the back the back's going to go down but a lot of people are saying hey you know I've added a bull bar and bash plates and dual batteries and all the things that go on the front that add weight nothing at the rear so the rear the front's gone down really low and the rear's still nice and high and they don't really carry much weight in the rear what can I do 
all you need to do is something about the front. You can actually just put springs on whatever's in there, or you might want to just replace the front springs and struts with some nice uh, Dobinson's monotube at the front there and some spring, that package assembled, ready for DIY installation. Just to give you an idea, you're probably looking about, I don't know, 800, 800, 900 bucks to your door. So a little bonus one for the Hilux guys there at the end. We've answered 10 questions in one about 10 minute video. Please give us a thumbs up for absolutely nailing it on efficiency and productivity. I hope you like that one. But if remember, if you do want more detailed information, there's plenty more videos there. Check our playlists. We've got two YouTube channels, one for the touring information, one for the mechanical side. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Please subscribe, turn the bell on. See ya.